There was a picture I seen that you posted. Uh -huh. uh, you had a pic with Dr. Dre. Yes. Uh, what was the backstory with that picture? Well, that particular night, we were um, at the Oxnard premiere event. Okay. Um, I have been on, um, okay, so I met Game through Instagram. <laughs> he hit me up and was like, yo, you're dope. And then we started working on documentary one and two, I mean, two and 2.5. Okay. Then there I met Anderson Pack. Me and Anderson, I have been on all of Anderson's albums, including this next one that's coming up. And then Anderson one day was just like, oh, Sony come through, like come do some shit. On. And I walk in and Dr. Dre is there like, damn, you could at least tell me Dre was gonna be in the building. Like, <laughs> he's my favorite of all time. Like. And you know this. So he was there and then he just was so super nice. And we clicked and we worked like the very first day I met him. And then fast forward, the Oxnard listening event, that was when we took that picture. He put uh -huh. me, he saw me, we haven't seen each other in a while. He hugged me, he was like, yo, I've been trolling you, yo. I've been trolling you, yo. He just said all of these dope things to me that I needed at the time because I was actually going through something that he didn't even realize and I asked God for a sign and he said all the things that I was like really asking for. And um, yeah, then we took that picture and we took a few like boomerangs, so it was cool. Uh -huh. I don't think <laughs> I've seen Dr. Dre do a boomerang before. Like so ever. That's, that's and interesting. We did like 10. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel pretty special. No. That moment uh, where you where you ended up working with Dr. Dre, yes, uh, did th did any of that material ever ever come out? It's still in the cut, like chronic. <laughs> it's still in the cut, but uh, it might come out soon. Um, he wants to get in and like do some more stuff, so I'm go I'm gonna have some stuff out with Dre. Period. I think I have some stuff out coming out on Anderson's. I mean, you never know. You gotta wait and see. <laughs> now but we got some stuff in the cut. Now, did did Anderson just was it okay? Take that story with Anderson. Was it one of those he knew you eventually wanted to meet Dre, so this was an opportunity to wow. to connect you to, or was it just one of those impromptu? Hey, just slide I think through. For Anderson, it was impromptu. But when he when he brought me there, he gassed me up so crazy. He didn't even realize how much it meant to me. Like, cause he's around Dre all the time. Right. So. He's like, yeah, you never met so oh, you never met so here, Dre? Like, no. He's like, oh no. He's like, oh, she's just only my muse and helps me with this and that. And she I mean, he just talked me up so crazy. It was like it was instant love from Dre because he loved Anderson so much, you know what I mean? And respects him and the people that he brings around. So it was just the the best the best way to like meet him ever, honestly. Now, in a situation like that where you're not expecting to meet, and I think you use the words he was like I forgot what you said about Dre. You said he's the best ever. Or he was my favorite producer. Of all your time. favorite producer of all time. Okay, yes. that was what you used. Excuse me. Take your time. <laughs> do you see that? Because <laughs> we had to do a quick fix. <laughs> we had to do a quick fix. Yeah. Now, okay. When it's an impromptu situation like that, yes. and it's your favorite producer of all time. Yes. Is that, and you actually end up working with him that night. Is, are you intimidated? Actually, I played it really cool. I got the work done because I feel like I'm, I'm a pro stuck in a, a stage of people are still like discovering me, but because of like all the people I've been around all the time that I like put into my craft, I really feel like I'm at this level already, you know what I mean, in my mind and my work ethic and all of that stuff. So I just, I mean, I was in that motherfucker like, we've been working for years. But when I got home, I cried so hard. Like, I held it together when I was there, but when I got home, I was like so grateful and I just cried and called my mom. <laughs> it was like, oh my God, mom. Like, to actually write something down when you're younger and then like, that was one of the first times I feel like I wrote something down like, top of my list, Dr. Dre, work with Dr. Dre, and then it just actually happened like, mm. oh shit. You know, everything else I kind of bump into, like working with my peers, like working with Thug and all these things. It's just like, I kind of bumped into that stuff. But Dre, I like, I manifested that for a long time. Like I really, I really, really wanted that to happen. It didn't happen, so. 
it was crazy. I see. So not an intimidating feeling. Right. Was it ever a nervous feeling? No, because he was so cool. Like I, I heard stories like, like he's really, really like um, a stickler for this, that, and the third. But I feel like, I feel like when, how do I say this in not a non arrogant way? Okay. <laughs> like I feel that I am amongst these people because I have to be one of them, right? But like a baby version. So um, I just feel like he kind of like, it falls into place. If if the music is right and I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, it's just like, it flo it's flowing. And that's just what we did. It just flowed. It was no like, oh, I'm messing up and he's on me and mm. he on my head. And nah, like it was just me and Andy worked so much. You know what I mean? Together for for like a couple years now, it just like was a natural flow. Then I had him there to kind of like it just felt like we do this all the time, yeah. even though that was my first time. <laughs> I see. But it was cool. I don't drink. He made me a drink, of course. I I I took the drink because it was Dre that made it. I was like, I'll sip one sip, of course. <laughs> like whatever, I'm down. Like let's get this vibe right. Let's go in. He was just so cool. Man. So there was a little peer pressure. A little No, it wasn't peer pressure because, <laughs> well, like I'll take a little champagne here and there, but I don't drink nothing hard, you know, honestly. They were drinking something brown and I'm like, you wanna drink? I'm like, Yeah, sure, shit. I'm <laughs> Say no. <laughs> I mean I could have said no, but I took a little sip and then I put it down. I was like, Man, you heavy handed. <laughs> Strong. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was cool. I left the cup there. I think they took the cup. I think Andy finished the cup for me. I sipped it though. So, okay, you take a sip. May, or maybe you just take it just to be nice. Like, right. hey, here's a no, cup. No, not to be nice. I totally was like, if you making my drink, I'm drinking it. Like, <laughs> I totally was like, it wasn't to be nice. It was Dre, what's up? Like, <laughs> what you doing? I'm doing it. Cause you a billionaire. I'm trying to get to where you at. <laughs> Whatever you did, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Nah, but um, yeah, it just just was in a vibe in a moment. Sometimes you try stuff because, like, wait a minute, you don't try everything. But you know, I only took a sip. It's not that deep. <laughs> now, just curious. In this instance, you took a sip, but right. normally you don't drink uh, uh -uh. hard stuff. Maybe a little champagne here. Maybe a little bubbly for a celebration or like the homie's birthday or something. But I'm really not into liquor like that at all. I like water. Uh, what about any other uh, types of drugs? Do you, are you ever under the influence when you, in creating mode, whether it's writing, whether um, it's recording? Yes, when I create, sometimes I smoke okay. a little bit, but I don't even know how to roll up, so not that much. I see. Right. That's as far as it goes. Right. I'm just curious. Everybody's different. Some people do stuff, some people don't. Right. 